Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about rectifiers. And rectifiers are a particular type of nonlinear circuits, uh, which essentially um, eliminate either the positive or the negative part of an input AC signal. Uh, there are two modalities of rectifiers. There are the half-wave rectifiers, which simply um, let through part of the signal, either the positive or the negative, and suppress the other one. And the full wave rectifiers, which um, allow through the positive or negative part of the input signal, and then invert uh, the other part so that the, re the um, resultant output signal will be uh, all positive or all negative. So if we take a look at the picture here, uh, we'll see I have my input waveform, which is uh, an AC signal, just a sinusoidal signal. If I run it through a half wave rectifier, what I expect to get, it's an output signal which will be uh, positive and essentially equal to the input signal whenever the input signal was positive. And then in those regions where the input signal uh, was negative, we can see that the output signal is essentially zero. So if I wanted to write that mathematically, I would say my output signal is equal to uh, V in for V in greater than zero in equal to zero otherwise, or for V in less than zero. In the case of the full wave rectifier, you can see where the input signal was positive, the output signal follows the input, where the input signal was negative, uh, the output signal uh, becomes positive. So it's, uh, it's equal in magnitude to the original input signal, but the polarity has been reversed. And so I can write that mathematically as saying for a full wave rectifier, my output signal is equal to uh, V in for V in greater than zero or negative V in for V in less than zero. And just to make sure I include all the V ins, I'm going to add a, a greater than or equal in the first expression everywhere. Uh, so we can see, in essence, what the full wave rectifier is implementing mathematically is the absolute value function. So I could also write that my V out is equal to my, the absolute value of my V. Now, this is a simplification as rectifier circuits um, in some cases can have a gain. So, they, you know, it would be perhaps more general to express that the output is uh, proportional to the input signal or the inverse of the input signal. But to simplify matters, uh, we'll just leave it that, that way for now. Uh, there are different implementations for rectifier circuits. We are going to start with the two most basic and simple ones, which are uh, the passive half-wave rectifiers. And uh, we're going to start with the series version of that circuit. We can see uh, a series passive half-wave rectifier consists of a diode in series with a resistor. Uh, where the output is taken across the resistor. We can see that uh, for positive input signals, the diode is going to be forward biased, and therefore there's going to be some current flowing through that diode, um, and um, there's going to be a certain voltage drop across the diode, but in essence, the output voltage is going to be equal to V in minus one diode drop for positive input signals. And one should say for input signals that exceed uh, the voltage, the diode voltage drop around 0.7 volts. So if I were to draw my input-output characteristic for the circuit, my V in versus V out, I would have that, as we mentioned, as the input becomes positive, at some point it's going to uh, turn on the diode. I'm going to mark that as uh, 0.7 volts, roughly. And then for, uh, for negative input signals, we can see the diode is going to be reverse biased, and so no current flowing through the diode. That means no current flowing through the resistor, uh, which implies by Ohm's law that the voltage across the resistor is equal to zero. So this is the input-output characteristic for the, um, the serious passive half-wave rectifier. If we wanted to think in terms of uh, what happens to the signal, we could represent an input signal. Actually, I'm going to move this a bit to the left so it lines up with the 
plot above. I could plot my input signal. V in versus uh, time. And just so that we see the difference, I'm going to plot the output of the rectifier in a different color, like for example, blue. And so what I expect to see is that um, differently from the ideal rectifier, I will have that my output won't actually start turning on until the input signal is approximately 0.7 volts. And then at that point, it's, the output signal will remain 0.7 volts below uh, the original input signal. And again, once the input signal, when it's going in the negative direction, once it reaches 0.7 volts, uh, the output will essentially be zero. And so this is more or less the output of my... of my series passive halfway rectifier. But I have a delta of approximately one dial drop of 0.7 volts. So again, if I wanted to write it mathematically, I would say my V out is um, equal to V in minus 0.7 volts for V in greater than or equal to 0.7 volts and V out is equal to zero otherwise. Now, 0.7 volts, you know, is that a lot? Is that too little? Uh, is that reasonable or not? That's going to depend on our application. If we are going with an application where we are dealing with uh, tens of volts, perhaps 0.7 volts uh, is not going to matter, again, depending on what we are doing. But if we are going with an application where our signals are very small, uh, or we are dealing with a precision application where um, accuracy is important, this circuit is not going to cut it, so we're going to need to look for an alternate solution. Another uh, potential candidate for those situations is the shunt version of the passive half-wave rectifier. If we look at the circuit, we can see that uh, it's essentially the same as the series one, except now the diode is connected in shunt with the input signal, as opposed to in series with the input signal. So basically, the location of the resistor and the diode have been swapped. Now, I can see in this case, if my input signal is positive, uh, essentially, my diode is going to be reverse biased, uh, which means that my output signal is going to be equal to the input signal. That is, of course, as long as I don't connect um, a load at the output, that will um, essentially change my circuit. But let's imagine for now that uh, we're not considering that limitation of the circuit. Let's, let's imagine that uh, we have a, an open circuit, a perfect load of infinity. Uh, in that case, if I wanted to draw my input-output characteristic for the circuit, V out versus V in, what I will see essentially is that for uh, positive voltages, my input will follow my, or my output, excuse me, will follow my input. Uh, but then for negative voltage, Notice that my uh, diode will turn on, and, uh, and so essentially with the diode turn on, there will be a constant voltage drop across the diode, which is not exactly zero. Um, it will be negative 0.7 volts approximately, and so this will look something like negative 0.7 volts. If I wanted to translate what's happening um, into a representation of what happens to my input signal, I could redraw my same input signal, V in. And so if my input signal is the same perfect sinusoidal signal that I had in the previous case, what I expect to get in this case um, is basically for uh, positive voltages, or slightly more than uh, slightly more than positive, I mean, you can see that um, for slight negative voltages, until you uh, get to turn on the diode, you're still going to be um, passing through the input signal, and so this is going to look like uh, perfect until there, and then it's going to take 
around uh, 0.7 volts in the negative direction to turn on the diode so that the output essentially becomes equal to the turn on voltage of the diode, 0.7 volts. So one advantage of the circuit is that we can see at least in the uh, positive half cycle, we have more accuracy than before. We are losing that 0.7 volts. Um, unfortunately, we are passing through part of the negative portion of the signal. Uh, so we have that inaccuracy as well. Uh, other limitations with the circuit will be that, of course, as soon as I connect a load to my output, it's going to form a voltage divider with my uh, first resistor, and so I will no longer have that perfect uh, relationship between input and output. I'm going to have some loss of signal. Um, but if I, you know, if I don't mind that, or if I am expecting uh, to get a little bit of an attenuation, that may not be an issue. But another limitation with this circuit is also uh, that there is a, a maximum value of voltage uh, that you can apply in the negative direction before you reach the breakdown. Uh, voltage of the diode, we we'll call it PVR. Um, and so you're also limited in uh, how large of a negative signal you can apply for the circuit to work as intended. And we could essentially say in this case my um, output voltage, V out, is going to be equal to V in or V in greater than or equal to negative 0.7 volts and V out will be zero. Otherwise, all right. So we see that both of these circuits have uh, substantial limitations, and so perhaps we're going to look for another alternative, uh, one that has the precision of the second circuit, but without having to deal with the fact that we are passing through some negative portion of the signal, and uh, certainly without having to deal with the loading effects, perhaps, and so. Um, the next alternative that is available is the active version um, of the half-wave rectifier.